Hello, everyone. Welcome to our sixth webinar, The Lockdown Scholar, all about ways we can learn new things while we're, most of us, stuck at home. Do I give a few minutes for more attendees to join us? I know we've got more people coming. I see Glenna and Karen, Ned, Pat, hi mom, and Tony. We're getting there. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, we are here representing Travis Association for the Blind or the Austin Lighthouse. Um, my name is Thomas Stivers and I'm uh, the service coordinator over at the Austin Lighthouse, making sure that all of our uh, employees and people from the community are getting training, um, which is a bit crazy to do right now because we can't really <laughs> do on in-person training very much. Um, so in order to keep the training going, we're doing these uh, uh, webinars. Um, presenting on the panel today with me, we have um, Aaron Hoffman, our lead adaptive technology instructor, and Dan Hart, our um, data and accessibility specialist. Um, we're going to talk about ways you can learn new things on, online through uh, different apps, ways to get access to books and all kinds of different uh, educational materials. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Laurel Miller and Northwest Hills Eye Care for allowing us to uh, uh, speak to their uh, support group and sort of sharing our information with everyone and, and bringing people to our events. Um, with that, I guess we will go ahead and get started with our, we're going to discuss several different apps that are available on the iPhone and on um, Android that'll let you read books from the, what just got published last week. Um, to the classics, to uh, other other approaches to learning materials, such as videos and um, podcasts, things like that. So with that, uh, Aaron is going to start by teaching us about Speechify that can help us uh, learn to listen to text-to-speech messages at a higher speed. A lot of people every day will hear my computer speaking and they think it's a different language. And it's just because I've listened to JAWS with the speed turned up uh, to 11. <laughs> so um, it's actually possible to, to use a program called Speechify to gradually bring that speech up and, and learn, teach your ears how to do it. Aaron, will you show us how it works? Thank you, Thomas. Speechify. Hello, my name is Aaron Hoffman. I'm an adaptive technology instructor at the Travis Association for the Blind. Today, we'd like to start off our work and play series with Speechify. It's available for iOS and Android, and it's a program that will teach you how to read faster. If you listen to audiobooks, you might be listening about 150 words per minute for uh, human read audiobooks or even text to speech. But other times, if you're listening to Narrator or JAWS, if you need to read something very quickly, you want to turn the speech up and you want to be able to comprehend it. And sometimes just bumping something up 100 or 200 words per minute will be very, you won't get much done. But if you train your ears little by little by little, just like exercising, you'll gradually acquire muscle memory and comprehension and such. And Speechify is very interesting because you can set it to adjust the speed of your reading. For example, I have an article here for sports, and if it were a long article, every 500 words or so, it would increase the speech rate about five words per minute. Selected, articles, icon listening play, button, icon listening play, button. Right now, play. I have an article for sports that's at 300 words a minute, and every thousand words or so, it will bump up the speed five words a minute. And you would be surprised that before you know it, you'll be reading something and it'll be about 600 words a minute. Screen tip. 
Icon listening play. Icon listening pause. Possibly pause. Trouble loading this video. You can check out other videos while we get it together. I want to get some live bats. Berger told the Associated Press in a telephone interview, I think that's the most important thing for me right now, is trying to simulate a full 300, 305. I bats and face some guys just off to the side, too. So that's kind of how it started. The cancellation of the 300 test minor league season left prospects like Berger without anywhere to go for game action that helped continue. 320. Some major league teams are keeping their top farm hands on their taxi squad. 325. Everyone. Left-hander Gary Crochet, the number 11 pick in this game. Icon listening pause. Icon listening pause. Icon listening pause. That's a small sample of... Uh, we did every sentence or so, it would increase the speech. And you would be able to read a book very, very quickly. For example, Harry Potter uh, and the Source for Stone. One of the examples on the site was you could read it in about 45 minutes if you were using a very fast uh, speech rate. If you started it out, it would take you about seven hours at the normal speech. But if you bump it up every small bit, if it's, uh, let's say, a college textbook or even just some pleasure reading, you can read things very, very quickly, and you will learn that in a month or so, your default reading speed will be, it might be bumped up 100 words a minute, and you don't even realize it. So you can learn very quickly to read books and other material with text-to-speech, with uh, Speechify. That is pretty cool. Um, I know I would, I don't know that I would get the same joy of reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, if I read it in 45 minutes, but there are definitely books that I'm reading because I have to, not necessarily because I want to. Like um, one book that I have read recently was our company's employee handbook. It's about 50 pages. It's pretty dry and it's not something I'm reading for pleasure. It's something I'm reading because I need it, you know, just to, to, to have read it. Um, that's a great time to be able to speed things up a lot. Um, I can read that whole 50 pages in, I, I think it came out to about 15 minutes at my, at a speed I found comfortable. Um, so it's a lot nicer than sitting there for an hour to two hours going over the whole, reading the whole thing. I just need to know what's in it. So later, if I need to refer back, I, I know it was, know it was there. That's, that's what I'm really looking for. I'm not having a, uh, flight of imagination reading something like that. Um, another program or app, I should say, I'm old, I'm a little old school, so think of everything as programs. Another app that I like a whole lot for uh, reading text-based material. So what Aaron had there was not uh, a recorded book, but it was just a text file or a, or a web page or a Word document that he had loaded in. Another program that will let me do the same kind of things um, is Voice Dream Reader. It's, a, it's also a text-to-speech voice, but it works separately from VoiceOver on the iPhone or from TalkBack on the Android. So you play and pause the text-to-speech voice just like you would an audiobook or music, which is nice because um, if you're doing other things while you're reading, it's very easy to touch the screen and now voiceover has stopped reading and is telling you what you touched on the screen uh, if you try to read in something like iBooks. So Voice Stream Reader gives you a wide array of different voice options in several different languages um, that you can read different texts in. Um, Voice Dream Reader it is designed to pull in uh, Bookshare books, which is very nice. Uh, Bookshare, if you're not aware of it, is a service for um, blind or print disabled people, which has probably a couple hundred thousand, maybe more um, text books. And they are legal by the, for blind people to read. They're, they're sort of either given to Bookshare or they're in some cases scanned by volunteers and then cleaned up and corrected. Um, and there's much more content than you're going to find on Audible on um, the NLS uh, National Library Service site or anywhere else. Um, so here I've got queued up Pride and Prejudice and I'll go ahead and start that playing. And I can do that with my usual two finger double tap on the iPhone to just start, that'll start a music player. In this case, it's just gonna start my book. 
Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Chapter 1. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighborhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding so, families that he is considered the rightful property. It sounds just like voiceover, but I could have chosen a different voice from from the voiceover voice that I normally use. I did choose a different speed. So you can hear as I move around the screen, you'll notice voiceover is separate from the book text. Seven hours, 49 minutes, 38 seconds. I'm not reading it quite at Aaron's crazy fast speed. <laughs> And so now I can do, I could pause it, but because it's a text file instead of a audio book, I can actually read the words on the screen with voiceover. Um, so I can scroll through the sentences and then if I need to, if I need to spell a word, uh, which is particularly important for young readers who, um, you know, if they if they read everything as audio, they're not going to learn good spelling. Um, and sometimes if you're learning, if you're reading everything as an audio book and writing everything in grade two Braille, your spelling is going to be a real mess as a kid. So um, having a way to quickly stop where you are in your book and check the spelling of a word um, so that maybe you can use it in a report or things like that is really important um, for younger readers. Uh, Voice Dream has been around for quite a while. I think it's usually um, $14.99. I bought it on sale and it goes on sale a couple times a year for $4.99. Um, and that comes with one high quality voice. Um, I have switched to a new phone not that long ago, so I don't actually have the high quality voice downloaded which I realized shortly before we started this meeting. So that's why we got um, our standard iPhone Samantha voice. So in addition to uh, these text-based books, um, we have the one that's been around with us for a very long time called Learning Ally. Um, it was called rfb and D back when I was a kid and using it for school. Um, oh, Aaron just asked a question in text. Um, he asked if VoiceStream can handle uh, formats commonly found in the workplace or in educational environments like PDF and DocX. It can. Um, it will open up a DocX file with no trouble. Um, and, uh, and PDF files. Um, at least that's, that has been my experience. Uh, I'm sure with some documents with ta complex tables and graphics, it was, it's going to have some trouble and you may need to export it as a text file first. Um, but it will read and, and extract text from PDFs and documents. That's a, that's a very nice feature. Uh, it will also read, um, I believe the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the kind of books that Bookshare uses. Aaron, do you, what's the word? Daisy books, there it is. Mm -hmm. It will also read Daisy books, um, which are not that common in, in the, you know, in public, but in the blindness world, Daisy is a very popular format for educational materials. Um, like I was saying about Learning Ally, they produce a lot of textbooks and, um, things that you're never going to find for sale on, on Audible or um, find it, somebody that has done a recording of for LibriVox, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Aaron, will you speak a little bit about your sort of experiences with Learning Ally? Absolutely. Thank you, Thomas. Back when I was in college for the first time and the second time, I was a language student and I loved learning languages. And one of the biggest problems that we had if we were look, reading it in Braille or we didn't have a lot of practice was pronunciation, proper pronunciation and conversational tone. And one thing I learned when I was doing Spanish or Russian or Japanese, I found that the textbooks, the audiobooks they had there were read by people 
but they had different accents, which gave me a very good benefit when I was studying languages. Because, for example, my Spanish book, it had readers from about 10 different countries in Latin America. So I got to hear the same words pronounced with different phonemes, with different accents, and it really helped me to understand that, you know, uh, certain words would be pronounced differently just on certain contexts and from certain countries. And it really helped me in my conversation because uh, my teacher was from Nicaragua. I was speaking to someone from Mexico, then someone from mainland Spain, and then someone who was taking uh, Spanish in Brazil. So it was, it was very helpful because I had that sort of advanced notice what these shifts were going to be. It was very fun. And another um, application for uh, studying, talking with people is you'll find conversations that sometimes your boss might come in and say, hey, we need to work on this project or hey, we need to start this other project. And you might have no idea what they're talking about. But suddenly you're the new SME, you're the new subject matter expert or by God, they want you to be that within the next month. So you don't panic, you go to your app store and you type in LinkedIn Learning. And that's an application for iOS and Android. It also has a desktop version. And that's a sort of Facebook for professionals LinkedIn. But the learning aspect is a branch off of the old lynda.com, which was computer-based training, sort of like the old CBT Nuggets or Learn Key, where you would learn IT skills. Well, Linda brought that into other skills, such as professional development, career development. Uh, there's still a lot of great IT stuff and software specializations. And LinkedIn Learning lets you get job-ready skills when uh, your boss comes knocking at the door and you'll find that if you study something, you can get uh, certificates for completing them. They look very good in your file uh, when review comes up. <laughs> and when uh, you can take a single course that maybe lasts a half hour, or you can take what's called a learning path, which is a collection of several different courses linked together, sort of like a college semester. And you'll be the SME and other departments will knock on your door and send you emails because they've heard about your success. And that allows you uh, great opportunities in your job for just enjoying new paths of learning or if you need to catch up on a new update of software because you hear IT is going to migrate to enough software. For example, we'll be migrating to a new uh, online system. I didn't know much about it, but I jumped on LinkedIn and I found out a great course and I studied all about it. So I could uh, converse with them and ask them finer points related to accessibility and they were happy about it. And next up that we have, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so now we kind of wrap up our, our topic of sort of the, the work and um, just learning things for business development, learning things for the job. And we sort of switch tracks to um, things for fun. But before we do that, does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, any apps that that they really like for um, learning things and reading things, just sort of getting new information that kind of pertains to the workplace or education. You know, the, I hate to say it, but the more boring side of life. Um, anybody have any questions, comments? No? Well, hopefully you're saving up the questions for the end. Uh, that's what I'm telling myself. Um, next, we kind of switch over to some things that are a little more interesting to, to just have fun with. Um, education for education's sake or for the sake of entertainment. Um, an app I use for thousands and thousands of hours probably every year <laughs> is um, the Bard mobile app. It allows me to access all of the free publications um, that are up on the National Library Service uh, talk, or through the Texas Talking Book Program. Um, you may remember those from back in the early days when they were flexible 
discs and we had a record player to play them or getting big green boxes full of cassette tapes and uh, flipping them over. And uh, now they have done moved all of that online. Um, the National Library Service and the Texas Talking Book Program. The, text, the Talking Book Program do um, make those physical copies available for people. They are in a digital form, but it's a, it's a physical cartridge that you can place into a player. Um, but they're also available online. There's um, probably about 100,000 audiobooks and, um, and 20 to 30,000 Braille books. I'm, I'm kind of guessing, guessing the Braille number. Um, and they are a lot more um, novels and fiction. There is nonfiction, there's biographies, there's, um, there's self-help type books, there's all kinds of things there, but it's all free. Um, for people who are blind or have a, a print disability, they can sign up for the Texas Talking Book Program, which makes you a patron of the National Library Service um, for, the, for the blind and physically handicapped. That opens up a whole lot of opportunities for different, different books. And um, I think I've got 15 books on my phone right now in the BARD app. Um, I'm sure I've read, you know, another couple, couple dozen this year and a couple hundred probably last year. Um, Glenna asked if you have to be a registered member to sign up for BARD, and yes, um, you do have to have a basically a library card uh, with the Texas Talking Book Program or the National Library Service in, in a, your state, if you're not in Texas, um, to use BARD. And you just call up the, um, the Talking Book Program and request to be signed up, set up for a, an online account and you'll get a username and password that you can just plug into the app and then you're ready to download the books. You don't have to go to a website or anything. Once you download the Bard mobile app, put in your username and password that the, the library provides, you're ready to go. Um, I can't speak too highly of, of uh, or, you know, it's, it's hard to speak too highly of Bard mobile. Um, I've just gotten so much pleasure from reading from using it and read quite a few books um, that helped me professionally. Um, Aaron, I saw a minute ago that Eric was asking about sort of the class format for LinkedIn Learning. Um, can you sort of explain what the, what the experience of going through one of the LinkedIn Learning classes is like? Absolutely, I can. I have LinkedIn Learning open right now and I have, sort of a homepage of picks, class picks, based on what I've studied before, and I can cycle through a few of them. Time management, working from home, one hour, 25 minutes, popular, course, leading from the middle, 49 meters, course, DIY filmmaking tips weekly, managing stress, 21 meters, Excel 2016, avoiding common mistakes, LinkedIn learning highlights, data science and analytics, 42 meters, course, button. So each of these are individual courses. Those are anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. I've taken 10 hour courses and they will be broken into what's called micro learning. You can have each little tidbit of knowledge. Uh, it comes as a video. Some instructors are great. They'll describe everything. They'll give you keystrokes, but others will be click here, follow this link, do this, watch, watch what I'm doing. Uh, so the quality for some instructors, it's, ugh, but at the end of your studies, you can take quizzes and you can actually get continuing education units for some courses. For example, the Project Management Institute, or you can get certificates that you can put in your review file. For example, uh, you've completed a whole learning path, for example, that has 12 different courses. It'll print out the names of them when you took them. And if there's any uh, continuing education units for project management or career development, it'll print those on your certificate. And if you take a uh, course, for example, you're registered with the PMI, you can actually use those for continuing your education just like you would if you uh, had an MOS or you had an A plus or such and you needed to 
keep uh, studying for a year or so. Okay, my mute button was acting a little weird. Um, so Aaron, is it all video courses or are there uh, text-based courses that you can just read over material and then take quizzes as well? They do provide audio options for the videos and they provide transcripts of their videos. And you can, if you're on the mobile, you can download the entire course so you can listen to bits of it while you're on Metro or while you're on the bus. And the transcripts, you can uh, get the transcripts to read them and there will also come a lot of them with uh, practice exercise files to uh, go through yourself. I've used the transcripts to uh, search for when I'm learning uh, Kotlin or something in Python. I'll find certain examples they went through and I'll, I'll type, you know, control F when I'm on the desktop and I'll find what I'm looking for there. Okay, so they are, there are, there is information available as text. I kind of figured since you want, you like to read everything at, at uh, such high speeds that you wouldn't have the patience to read videos at normal or to watch videos at normal speed. Well, luckily so they, be... they do have two, two X for that, uh, but they, I've learned that is. programming tutorials are not the best for hyperspeed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also a reason to, I bring it up is programming is not, not a great, especially as a, as a blind person is not the greatest for video. I kind of need to actually read the code in the text that as, as we're sort of going over it. So yes, I was in, curious uh, if it's programming, they will provide that. example files that you can open up in uh, visual studio code or whatever your ID is and you can follow along with them. Okay. So I was going to play it uh, just, so give a quick example of um, Bard Mobile before we move on. They make a, the screen is pretty simple. Um, I see at the top a recently read button that t lets me go to the books that I've most recently had open. Airplay, I can send it to my Bluetooth speaker. This book is The Art of Statistics, How to Learn from Data. It, it's not necessarily the greatest of page turners, but um, we've kind of been focusing on learning, so I picked that one. Navigation that lets me switch pick between chapters. It tells me the name of the chapter. Communicating numbers, lots of numbers. Current time in the, into the book and the total time of the book. My current position at 12%. A sleep timer I can set. Bookmarks. Uh, previous jump by chapter and next to switch jump by switch through the book by chapters and rewind play and fast forward and of course Aaron's favorite button the speed control which I have set to normal but I honestly do normally read it 200% um, and I can just start this book hit the play button and but even if Bristol is removed try putting your thumb over the outline point the pattern of the data for 1991 to 1995 and so it really to me is very slow rates more operations. It is convenient to use a single number to summarize steady increasing or decreasing relationship. There we go. That's more my speed. And probably Aaron's too. And so if you're reading something for for school, for work, as a requirement, nice to read it fast. And then if you're reading it for pleasure, my Personally, I really enjoy having things at a more normal speed with a, with a human reader and not text-to-speech. And then I can do other things and I can um, not have to have full focus on the book. I can wash dishes or vacuum or things like that. Uh, reading at those high speeds, you, you're pretty committed to only reading the book at hand. Um, So if you're interested in more information about um, signing up for the National Library Service, go, please um, ask for our, our handout and we'll send that over. And we have the, the number and the website that you can go to to get signed up. And we'll make sure to provide that with the, uh, with the handout information. Um, another very popular source for, for reading material is um, Audible, 
which has all of Amazon's audiobooks. Sadly, they're not free, but you can get the book on the same day it comes out in print. So if you want to have a discussion in a book club, you're ready to go. Uh, Dan, will you speak to, speak to us about your experiences with Audible? Sure thing. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can use Audible. They do offer a subscription-based service where you get, uh, for a certain price, I believe you get up to two books for free in a month. Um, and that's okay, but if you, if, if you really like to blow through books and you really just, just you're, you're really speed reading, another way that I have found, and this is what I do, um, I subscribe to the Kindle Unlimited service that Amazon offers. And what that allows you to do is it actually allows you to check out up to 10 books on their unlimited list at no charge and they are text-based. However, what you can do as well is you can also, once you have that title chosen on your Amazon page and you're getting ready to download it, there's an option to download the Audible version, and a lot of times, instead of the $10 or $20, whatever the Audible might cost on a one-off basis, I've seen them down as low as $0.99 cents to about 4 to $6. So, it, you, you know, it kind of depends on how much reading you want to do. If you want the text-based version and you want to go between the different versions, kind of a couple of different ways that you can use uh, Audible. Uh, Audible's very, very uh, accessible on both iOS and Android. It's got a built-in sleep timer that you can choose. You can choose to your reading speed to go down to say uh, 0.5 or up to 3.5 times the, the, the normal speed. You can take uh, different audio clips of of certain pieces of the of the uh, audible there you can choose between different chapters you can fast forward and rewind by 30 seconds and it's it's a very very good service i have enjoyed the audible service very very much and um you know again it's it's one of those that it's it does cost some money and but it Again, a book like The Martian, for example, that was one of the very first books that I read on Audible. And the person that did the casting for, or the, the reading of that book just really made that book and did a great, great job and really made that book come alive. And, um, you know, so it, some folks like to follow certain authors. I do know certain folks like to follow certain readers of the Audibles just because of how, how they do present the material. But again, very accessible, a couple of different ways that you can get your Audible books. And, and to be clear, you do not have to have a subscription to Audible to purchase an Audible book and play an Audible book. You, you can go through the Amazon app, like I was saying, and you can just purchase the Audible books uh, straight, at, straight away and go ahead and play them in your, in your list saves everything out to the cloud so you can download it to your to your devices you can share between your different devices just like you can most most of your all of your different amazon uh content so again very accessible and a very very nice way to read books all right thank you dan um my wife and i have had an audible subscription for a very long time i think we have probably close to 500 books um we have that we get two books a month or two credits a month and um we tend to we tend to use them um we're always finding something new that we want to read one nice thing with audible is its integration with um the amazon echo so if i don't want to mess around with my phone i can just say um, the, the Echo's wake word, uh, Lexa, and um, read my audio book and, or say, read uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or whatever it might be in my library. And it just starts playing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's a really nice feature. And I did, even though I tried not to, I still woke mine up. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, but Audible's a, Audible's a really nice service. It can get expensive if you like to read too many books, especially if you get into long series um, and you're having to wait for the next month for your next credit to come through for the next book in the series. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you can read an audible book on a, on a Victor reader or um, I don't think you can play them on the NLS player, but most book reader type devices you can and certainly on phones. Um, there's also some uh, an option for free recorded audiobooks that is kind of available to the general public, um, and that's through LibriVox. Uh, these are public domain books that are recorded by um, by sort of volunteer readers. Um, let's see, was it Aaron? Or are you going to speak about uh, LibriVox, or was that you, Dan? I think that was going to be Aaron. Absolutely. LibVox is to Audible what it's sort of Project Gutenberg to uh, Bookshare. And LibriVox is Project Gutenberg, Bookshare is like Audible, where you'll have, you know, new name, uh, new stuff. You'll find a lot of great old books from ancient works, uh, mid 20th century, obviously, to the Rotokas in modern times. Uh, probably cutting off about 1950, and these are all public domain, meaning they're 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 out of copyright. And you'll find people recording audiobooks. You'll find different versions. If uh, you don't like the reader, chances are they'll be gone during the next chapter. So it'll be a bit like RFB and D. Um, you'll find there's different readers, different accents. It's it's fantastic. You'll find audiobooks, different versions or different languages. Even you'll have translations and. They have very nice uh, collections. They'll have short story collections, for example, or children's literature collections or foreign language study collections. And they'll take these various authors and they'll take selections. They'll give different readers sort of like a round robin and you'll have collections. Maybe there's a, a mystery or a sm small poetry selection. Uh, it's coming up to its 140th uh, edition because there's so much there and it's so much for uh, variety. You can also find old time radio that's recent edition and old time radio is the perfect medium for us as BBIs. And you'll find uh, that you can find a series of 500 episodes all for free. I'm listening to an old series from 1938 called Dr. Christian. It's about a Minnesota uh, doctor. And there's also old uh, things from the fifties. There's old sci-fi X minus one uh, CBS mystery mm -hmm. suspense. And a lot of really old good shows, The Whistler, um, Life with Riley, comedies and such. And they're all uh, free. You don't have to worry about DVS for describing them. And there's no subscriptions for them. Because there, there's constantly things coming out of copyright. And they're constantly being pulled into the public domain for new old time radio broadcasters. Of course, entertainment, there's also news programming. You know, if you want to hear things about World War II and uh, news broadcasts are fantastic for that, just to hear issues of the day and whatnot. Another big place to find uh, reading materials or sort of material for learning is through different podcasts. I know we talk about podcasts all the time. I think we've mentioned it in at least two other of our webinars, if not more. Um, but it's such a great medium. You get such a mix of content, new thing, newer stuff. Um, there are podcasts where people are reading older material. I believe some of the LibriVox books are available in a podcast form so you can subscribe to it and get a chapter a day or a chapter a week, whatever your kind of comfort level is, however much you're ready to, ready to read. Um, one, Aaron mentioned World War II, one podcast that comes to mind that actually basically is an audiobook is hardcore history um it's a it's a podcast that does a really deep dive into a lot of different historical events um and get, comes he does a huge amount of research 
to find out different perspectives that may not be what you would normally hear in your in the history textbook about um, Guadalcanal, for example, or um, the Bay of Pigs, or, you know, I know that that's not that historical, but still there's a lot of resources that can be, this gentleman brings together. Uh, his name is Dan Carlin, and he um, brings a lot of information about history that actually kind of brings it to life. And uh, I was never much of a history um, fan in school. It was something I had to do, but it is actually interesting. And you see so many things that you go, oh, wow, this something like that happened in my life. You know, it, it, I remember when this happened in the world and it's so interesting to hear about it now, that kind of stuff. So, um, Dan or Aaron, do you have any particular podcasts that you're fond of for, uh, learning and, or reading, you know, book type material? Oh boy. Yes, sir. I do actually, this is a whole topic. <laughs> um, with both the Android and the Apple uh, platforms, there are so many different podcatchers out there, uh, things to play your podcasts on to keep your podcasts organized. Um, the, it, it's just, there's so many different options out there. Uh, I know the uh, default uh, one that's on the uh, Apple platform, I know is very, very good. Uh, I believe that's, is that Overcast? That's on. No, that Overcast is another the built -in one. Built-in one is just called Podcasts. Overcast Podcast. is a free alternative. And I think that was that's one that continues to come up when I talk to folks that are on the Apple platform. They love Overcast. Um, you've got Google Podcasts. You've got Pocket Cast. Um, over on the Android platform, Podcast Addict is just it's outstanding for accessibility. Everything I I run into very 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 few. Um, buttons that come up as unlabeled button or just button or something. Another one that's also very good that uh, I did not list here is uh, Beyond Pod. Uh, that's another one that's very uh, accessible. I personally, I on my phone, I was just trying to pull up my uh, my uh, podcast. I've got three different podcasts, or, or excuse me, four that are different old time radio. I've got uh, about three on there that are faith-based, and I've got, um, okay, don't laugh, but I've got about 12 on here that are Linux or tech-based. Um, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's shocked about that one, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, you can find any kind of a subject out there. You know, Thomas, you were talking about history. You can find all kinds of different things out there on history. Uh, old time radio is something that I, I really enjoy specifically all the old sci-fi. That's kind of my genre of choice. Uh, you've got uh, thrillers, you've got mysteries, you've got crimes, you've got, you know, drama, different things like that. Uh, really good podcast uh, or a good website to get into the podcast. If you want to get into old time radio is called relicradio.com. And they have a lot of different things uh, out there for you to take a look at. And like Aaron was saying, when you're listening in on old time radio, it's, it's really interesting to hear that, you know, some of these take place in the 40s, the 50s, or even in the 70s and the 80s. And you hear the different commercials, you hear some of the different ways people talk. And, it, and, and it's a very auditory experience where you hear the footsteps and you hear the rustling of things and and it's i i really enjoy the way the music is put together within the podcast as well it makes for just a very to me it's a very immersive experience when you're listening to especially from the 50s and the 60s i i really enjoy listening to old podcasts or old shows from that particular time era um but uh but yeah uh, again with your favorite pod podcatcher there you can go to your search button. You can type in a subject. If you have a particular person or a series that you want to listen to, chances are you'll find it out there. Spotify is another good pod, uh, uh, podcatcher out there. There you can, I was looking at that the other night. That's another really good uh, way to listen to podcasts as well. So um, if then we've kind of had an internal discussion, but I, if anybody here wants to learn more about different podcasts and, and really kind of dive deeper into the subject of podcasting, 
uh, or, you know, different podcasts, please let us know, uh, you know, some specific questions and we'll na really narrow in and uh, try to try to help folks out. And, There's uh, a lot of a lot of podcasts out there that uh, cover blindness specific topics. Um, I, I don't the one I like a lot is the Blind Bargains cast. Um, and they, they, they're always talking about sort of the current events in technology for, the, for blind people. And sometimes they'll just discuss current events in the sort of world of blindness. So um, when, whenever there's a convention, they'll usually have somebody who goes to the convention and speaks a little about what happened and things like that. Um, I like the, I like to be able to get my local news that way through, through the, the Austin American Statesman has a podcast. That's great. It's nice and short, but gives me a nice summary. Um, and I can get any of the major news networks like, uh, NBC, CBS, mm -hmm. ABC to, um, watch the news. And I can of course speed it up to two X. So I <laughs> can get through it fast with no commercials and no, sp no sports and no weather section. It's kind of great because <laughs> I have other places I go for that information. Um, the last kind of thing that, that on our agenda for today uh, is just using YouTube to find um, educational content or uh, information. I'm a, I, I like YouTube Premium. It is a paid service, but I don't have any commercials. And it really makes it so easy for me to just go on a deep dive down um, down a rabbit hole on some topic. Um, I like um, science type uh, information. And so podcasts like physics, or not podcasts, these are uh, YouTube channels, like Physics Girl, um, Fermilab has a channel, um, PBS Space Time are three that come right to mind. And these are, they, all of those do a pretty good job of telling you what's happening in the video. Um, YouTube, the risk you do run is a lot of videos don't give enough audio description for it to be interesting. But the flip side to that is there's so many options out there. You're going to find a set of channels that, that give you just the level of information and description you want. Um, one I like a lot, it's kind of ridiculous, is called Electro Boom. It's a, a gentleman who is teaching you about electrical circuits and uh, how to work safely with electricity. But in the process of teaching you how to work safely with electricity, uh, he shocks himself in various ways, dozens of times every, every episode. It's very funny. Uh, he's always, or he'll set things on fire on accident as a way of demonstrating, if you don't do it the safe way, here's what happened. Uh, I enjoy that quite a bit, and I've learned quite a bit from it, too. Um, Dan made a mention of Unbox Therapy, which is a, a mm -hmm. gentleman who is, he gets the latest in technology. Dan is interested in technology. I think we may have picked up on that. Um, um, but he's, he's getting the latest things that you may be interested in, but don't know if you want to buy, um, and sort of giving you the experience of getting it delivered or bringing it home from uh, the store and unboxing it and uh, getting it set up and just sort of gives a good description of what it feels like in your hand, things like that, that um, it's hard to get if somebody just opens up the, the newest iPhone silently to pretty music. It's, uh, it's nice to have, you know, a better sense of what's going on. Hey Thomas, just know that Electro yeah. Boom. Just know that Electro Boom just got one more subscriber right now. Uh oh! <laughs> I just found it. it. Looks great. That's a great. Um, that's a great looking channel. I don't, uh, I don't know what. I don't know if you're gonna agree once you watch it. It's a. Uh, it's there's a lot of comedy there, and it's. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. It's a little. It can. I wouldn't recommend it to the to the younger audience. Um, Everything is bleeped out. He doesn't actually curse, but every time he shocks himself, it does the bleep as if he had. <laughs> he actually did a behind the scenes video to show that uh, he never really, it's not real cursing that's happening in any of his videos, but he bleeps it out so that you think it is. <laughs> it's great. Um, but 
so that's that's about it for our agenda topics. Um, I'd like to open the floor for anybody to have questions. If you have ideas for another topic um, for us to discuss for the next podcasts or not podcast, this may become a podcast. Honestly, um, we're kind of doing that format. We're pretty unpolished, but we're learning. We're getting there. Um, but for our next webinar, if you have suggestions, um, it will be back to our regular Tuesday schedule um, on the 28th um, at the same, same time. Um, and if you do have any conflicts or if there are times that you would like us to be presenting, if you want to make any suggestions, um, now's the time to, to put, put it in the chat, raise your hand. You can always send me an email. Um, and I am, I'm eager to so, sort of hear questions or suggestions, new ideas. One topic we're thinking about doing next um, is comparing different sort of uh, smart home controls like the, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home and what, what can you do with uh, Siri, you know, and how can you make those do more than just play music and tell you the weather. Um, you can have it turn on lights and uh, turn, set your temperature, all kinds of things. And so that's a topic we've thought about covering. We might do something specifically on uh, just a deep dive into different options for podcasts that we like um, that might be related to blindness or, uh, or YouTube channels as well. Things of, that I think um, what, whatever you guys might be interested in, we kind of are, are looking for that feedback to know where to go next. And kind of to, to dovetail on what Thomas was saying there, uh, or what you're saying there, Thomas, is, you know, we're here to, to, you know, help and support, you know, everybody within the community, um, instructional videos, anything for entertainment, anything at all, anything that we can provide any kind of information on, that's, that's what we're here for is, and, and we we really would like some some feedback to hear from y'all as to what uh, you know what y'all would like to what y'all would like to see in the future. I'm not seeing any raised hands yet. All right, and let me I'll put let me put my email address into the chat. Um, Dan, if you'll tap dance for a few minutes while I type that in. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, we got, um, you know, uh, Thomas had mentioned about the different uh, types of the Echo, the Google Home. Uh, there is a lot you can do. You can monitor your, if you have a, a garage and you have, to have an automatic garage door opener, you can say, hey, uh, a lady, open my garage door, close my garage door, unlock my front door. If you have a smart lock, uh, you can also dovetail in with your ring doorbell. You can get special remotes for your ceiling fans to increase the speeds of your ceiling fans or the lights on your ceiling fans or your, any of your lights, anything that's plugged into an outlet. There's so many different things that you can do. You can, you can find recipes, you can play, you know, like Thomas was saying, you play your music. There's, they're more than just a speaker there than to just get, hey, hey lady, good morning gives you the daily briefing, um, you know, as far as something significant that might have happened that day or something significant about that day. There's just, there's a lot of things that you can do out there. Well, if that's, if that's about it, uh, I'm, I was hoping we'd get some more questions. Um, we did get some um, more text to speech or speech to text. So do you, are you, by that question, are you wanting more apps that use um, TTS and provide different voices? Um, are you looking for uh, dictation type apps as well? Because uh, you mentioned speech to text. Okay, that might be an interesting topic too, is how to, how to do dictation. Um, it's not just for your iPhone, you can do it. Uh, Windows has some dictation features built in. So that, that's something we'll, we'll look at um, putting something together about. 
I suspect Aaron has used the most dictation of all of us and, and sort of has the deepest knowledge, but I don't want to put him on the spot uh, Absolutely. To, to build a, build a presentation in the spur of the moment. But um, dictation is definitely a, a useful tool. I use it with my, my phone to do most of my texting because I hate typing on the tiny keyboard. Um, so I, I think that would be a, a nice, a fun topic to do for Apple, Android, and the PC. How can you uh, dictate your messages and so forth? All right. Well, we've we've still got four minutes. Um, I know the program that that has been around for a long time that does dictation is Dragon Naturally Speaking. Um, I believe Aaron has some historical experience. I don't. Aaron, do I, am I remembering correctly? You said you haven't used it uh, too much recently, but you've worked with it before. That's correct. I used to just studying for court reporting, and I used to write my software. I used to dictate, and I would go about 200 words a minute wow. when I was writing speech to text. And really, it comes down to learning how to speak to the computer, speaking with uh, shorthand, just like we use um, shortcuts for Braille, we use contractions. You can actually use contractions for speech, comma. Instead of saying comma, comma, you could say comma, ka, comma, or you could say quote, qui, instead of question mark. You can have shorthand, which will save you breath, which is like your typing speed. Each breath you have is equivalent to, let's say, five seconds of typing or whatnot. You can do some amazing thing with speech to text. Cool. Well, um, and I, I know that Windows has some features built in that anybody can just use. Um, Glenna, Glenna asked about, uh, could you use dictation to write a dissertation? Um, I'm pretty sure you could. Um, with, with enough practice, you would be able to get very good at writing that kind of thing. I think the then the limitation on speed is how fast can you get your sort of thoughts in order and, um, and on the page. Um, and the different dictation software has different abilities to correct errors. Um, that's something you don't really get much of with Siri or with, um, with the Google Assistant. Um, but some of the dictation options for the PC will let you set uh, delete the last three words or um, delete that sentence, um, move my cursor up two lines, that kind of thing. Um, there's some complicated scripts that need to be involved to make that work really well with a screen reader. But if you're not reading it using a screen reader, uh, dictation can be a really great option. Um, ah, I like that one. Um, <laughs> But before I go ahead and skip to it, I saw also Brandy mentioned the topic of um, the a PC with Windows versus the Mac versus an iPad using a smart keyboard. So I'm what I'm understanding that to mean is maybe sort of laptop alternatives. Um, what what tablets and and detachable keyboards make you know really work well and are accessible as sort of laptop alternatives? Is that I hope that's kind of what you're going for, Brandy. Um, and then Glenna also mentioned that the idea of just a deep dive into the um, sort of unsung Microsoft features, things that might be built into Windows uh, that most people never know about. Um, like if you, maybe like WordPad, although that might be a pretty obvious one, um, but the, the photo viewer, how, you know, is that usable? Windows Mail, uh, I know that one's pretty obvious, but some of these features that maybe nerds like us take for granted. Oh, Tony asks a big question. How do we deal with the six foot um, social distancing requirement right now? Um, in kind of our training environment. Mm. That has definitely been a challenge uh, is, is and figuring out how do we still train people on hands-on tasks without 
you know, coming into contact. Um, that I, I don't, I, that's a topic we can speak about, but I don't know that, that we have, I don't know that we have the answer either. Um, I've gone to a couple of webinars discussing it and, and I, it sounds like everybody's got questions and, and some ideas. One of the things that helps us a lot where, with what we do is the majority of the training we provide is to coworkers that um, we see every day, all day. We're all in the same environment. Um, and it's not uh, a lot of rotating of people. So I know Aaron deals with classes. And so he has to do a lot more, like people who come in from the community. And he has to do a lot more cleaning and extreme, you know, take extreme measures to, to take care. But um, it's a little different environment when we're working with people that we see every day. And it's almost like we have a household that's 400 people large because we see everybody at work. We try to socially uh -huh. stay socially distant, but inevitably we are in pretty, we are in contact uh, sometimes. Well, uh, we have just passed our 730 mark. Um, I'm glad we did get a run of some questions there at the end. Um, and I think I will go ahead and wrap it up. And thank you very much for your, for your compliment, Glenna. We appreciate it. Um, and we will look forward to doing it again on the 28th. Um, so we'll be back to our regular schedule on Tuesdays. Um, if, and like I said, if, if there are conflicts, if you really want to suggest maybe, hey, could you guys try another time or something, please send me an email about that. Um, I probably won't, we probably won't make a change unless we have a couple of, several people who say, hey, the, this time isn't, isn't the best for me. So um, if you do have a preference, I, I would, it would definitely help me to know about it. All right, everybody have a great evening and thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Take care.